والهجرة الانتقال من بلد الشرك إلى بلد الإسلام والهجرة فريضة على هذه الأمة من بلد الشرك إلى بلد الإسلام وهي باقية إلى أن تقوم الساعة والدليل قوله تعالى إن الذين توفاهم الملائكة ظالمي أنفسهم قالوا فيما كنتم قالوا كنا مستضعفين في الأرض قالوا ألم تكن أرض الله واسعة فتهاجروا فيها فأولئك مأواهم جهنم وساءت مصيرا إلا المستضعفين من الرجال والنساء والولدان لا يستطيعون حيلة لا يستطيعون حيلة ولا يهتدون سبيلا فأولئك عسى الله أن يعفو عنهم وكان الله عفوا غفورا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Today um, I wanted to address the issue of bad manners Yep, bad manners That um, we have been for very long periods of time experiencing from one another in uh in our communities um i want to talk about this issue because since i have started the hijra emirat group my whatsapp group and have been um conversing with sisters from different you know western communities such as england canada um France even, and of course, you know, the U.S., I'm from America, but um, I expressed to them that, you know, I haven't, this is the first time in a very long time that I've even met any new sisters uh, due to the fact that I just, um, I, I, I'm not very fond of meeting new people because is a reoccurring um, instances of bad behavior, and I mean very bad behavior. And when I go into detail with the sisters from these different communities, they have similar stories, and they agree with me. And um, it has nothing to do with the times that we're living in, per se, but it is an overall behavior and and mentality that comes along with living in subculture communities in uh in the west in secular societies and things like that and the reason why um and Allah knows best why many of us feel so comfortable being rude and not being very mannerly towards one another in secular societies is because there is no strong pushback or standard in addressing individuals who don't treat you well or who do not um, speak to you with respect. Now, there's a, there's a few reasons for that. When you're in a secular society and you create a community uh, that is religious-based, many times people will be, they will act very informal. You know, they, um, they don't have a larger society to hold them accountable for their behavior and their actions. And 
Um, I know this to be true because it seems as if, you know, once those who, for example, had a normal life before becoming religious were in greater society, in the secular societies, they know their limits. They show respect and common courtesy to the common man. But it seems like all of that gets thrown away once we get into these communities. And many people forget all of the manners and etiquette that they used in greater society. And it's now thrown away. It's a couple of reasons for that as well. It could be that we are those of us who who came from manners and know how to treat people got mixed in with individuals who are in the ranks or who come to the community uh, that have very little to no manners. And if the majority of a community is made up of these kind of individuals, then um, their behavior can rub off on you, unfortunately. And that can become the standard. Is that or... The greater society treats the Muslim as if he's insignificant, and then we also treat each other as if we're insignificant. It has psychological effects. You being under the um, under a non-Muslim law, whether you realize it or not, it um, it has uh, negative psychological effects on you and how we view one another and how we treat one another. However, we have the best guidance. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi was sent as a messenger to correct three affairs. The manners of the people, the worship of the people, and the beliefs of the people. Manners, having good manners, is something that is mohem is very important very very important in upholding the brotherhood and the the religion okay so along with learning your beliefs and your methodology and practicing that correctly manners have to be right alongside those two things. You can't have manners on the back burner and treat your brothers and your sisters any way that you want to treat them. Living in the Muslim lands and watching how the Muslims deal with one another is very formal. It's very formal. So from the benefits of coming to a wider Muslim society and not living in a community is that people know their limits, they know their boundaries, and they understand that if I violate somebody, if I violate this stranger who happens to be my brother, there's going to be consequences, okay? There's going to be consequences. Uh, We don't fear any consequences with dealing with each other the way that we deal with each other, and that has to stop. And the reason, one of the reasons that um, I wanted to address this topic is that, you know, you spend many, many years allowing people to trample you and then use the religion to smooth it over and put a Band-Aid on the violation. They, 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 they use the religion to make you think that you're crazy or um, excuse to excuse their behavior and then nothing ever gets fixed. So it leaves the person to never be able to advise you about your behavior because you just gave me a verse or a hadith to accept or excuse what you just, what you've just done with your rude behavior. Um you know, your belittlement to me, um, or whatever. 
you know, whatever the case may be from the negative things and negative behaviors and mannerisms that uh, we've been experiencing amongst each other. We have even been bullied into accepting certain behaviors from each other, uh, which is unacceptable. And it shouldn't be tolerated. And as relates to myself, it won't be tolerated. And what actually restored my integrity and um, allow me to realize that um, I, I, I can I can accept any any treatment less than respect is uh, living in a Muslim society where everyone shows you respect. And disrespect won't be tolerated. You can't go in any of these establishments and disrespect a random Muslim. You can't do that at all. They want to look at you like you're crazy. And in our societies in the West, if you go in any establishment and deal with people and you just disrespect them or you shoot out your opinions to demean them or belittle them, they're going to look at you like you're crazy and you may even get hurt. And the same thing will happen here. Or someone will complain about you or call the police on you. So manners are um, something that is uh, very important that needs to be addressed. And for those, those individuals who feel the same way and have the same gripe and have noticed the same thing. I mean, it's a behavior that everyone notices, but no, uh, I'm not going to say no one speaks up about it, but enough people are not speaking up about it. But I will say to you, stand up for yourself, create boundaries, and teach people how to treat you. And make it very clear what you will tolerate and what you won't tolerate. And... Do unto others what you were, what you want done unto you. وَخَالِكَ النَّاسِ بِخُلُقِ حَسَنٍ Prophet said, and deal, and deal with the people with the best treatment. So, I mean, it's about implementation. Put in, put in, your, put in your practice, you know, in action. And not just lip professing because... This is a big problem, and it's very offensive the way that some individuals think that they can deal with you and talk to you, not knowing what your background is, assuming that you're just going to, you know, stay within the bounds and have etiquette with them. That's the, that's the interesting thing about it. Um, those people who like to violate, they don't expect to be violated. Very interesting and uh, very foolish as well. So um, it's something that uh, it, it has to be uh, dealt with, and everyone should be working hard to fix themselves. And if you, if if no, if if others are not going to fix themselves, at least you have control over your own self, and letting people know what you will and will not tolerate. That's the least that you can do. You don't have to sit and tolerate anyone abusive, anyone's abusive behavior, or insolence or disrespect, regardless of us being from, uh, you know, trying to tread the path of Salafia. And that that should be all more reason why we should be the best of those who show good character and good manners towards each other. If you want Allah's aid and assistance, then you'll work in this area. And if not, like I said, establish some boundaries and let a person know what you will and won't tolerate. And if they don't respect that, then don't give them your time. But don't give them your, your don't give them any attention and they can keep they can take the, you know they can get their walking papers is what I like to say so that's what I um, wanted to talk about and um, I would like to hear what you all have to say about this topic 
And if you can give any input and extra advice, then please do in the comment section. And I will see you all in the next video. Ma'a salama. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.